Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Founder's Ascent. This is a podcast where we talk about books related to entrepreneurship, fitness, and self-improvement. My name is BJ, and I'm here with Gavin, and we're going to be talking about Atomic Habits by James Clear. And so we're just going to jump straight into it. Gavin, what are your first thoughts about this book? Yeah, so I think Atomic Habits is a really good book. I did give it five out of five stars on Goodreads, so I do appreciate its content. I think it has a really big audience because a lot of people know what they should be, should and should not be doing as far as their goals and habits are concerned. And I think this book does a great job outlining how to implement those habits that are extremely difficult to initiate within your life. And so we're going to be outlining how to get those habits initiated to begin with. Yeah. And I think in order to understand the value of atomic habits, these tiny changes that result in really remarkable uh, results in your life, the first thing you really need to understand is how just small changes and compound growth can actually result in massive changes. You will notice in the thumbnail, we said how to become 37 times better at anything. And that wasn't a mistake. That's actually a 1% change every day for a year results in 37.7 times wherever you started. And so that little change can just result in massive difference long-term. And that's not just applicable in just finance or a business. That's applicable in all aspects of your life. There's a great Naval Ravikant quote where he says, all the turns in life, whether in relationships or wealth or happiness, come from compound interest. I'm paraphrasing there. But that's really what the Atomic Habits is all about, getting those long-term results through tiny everyday changes. Yeah, and adding on to that about compound interest, compound interest is a really important principle. And most of the time when we think about compound interest, we think about investments and how as you keep your money in the market, you're going to reap bigger and bigger rewards because 1% of $100 is less than 1% of $1,000. And so as the principal increases over time, that 1% growth is going to become a lot more effective. And so this is kind of, if you've heard the term or the phrase delayed gratification, this is essentially where it comes from because you get those small incremental jumps over time which is why it's so difficult for people to stick with productive things because the growth in the beginning is very small. And over time, with that small incremental 1% adjustments, the benefits are going to become greater and greater. And those benefits will eventually result in you accomplishing your goals. And the book also mentions focusing on systems to accomplish your goals rather than just the goals themselves. And it lists four specific reasons why goals aren't effective ways to actually becoming successful. One of them is like winners and losers have the same goals. Everyone wants to win the gold medal, but only one person does. And um, so why does that happen? Well, obviously one person had a better system, better training regime, and probably didn't worry about the score so much as just getting stuff done, putting in the work and giving 100% focus to what you're trying to do, which is making small incremental gains over time that eventually result in a goal that you can't even imagine accomplishing. And how he recommends getting those done is through what he calls the four laws of behavioral change. And these sort of have a psychological basis in how people process uh, sensory input. It starts as a cue, and then you have a craving for whatever that cue was. And then from there, you respond to it in some way. And after that, you get some reward, positive or negative, for if you satiated your cra craving, then it's a positive reward. If it's still unsatiated, then it's a negative. And those four laws, those four uh, aspects of um, how we process inputs 
can be transitioned into four laws to change our behavior, which is the first law is to make it obvious. And so that's something I like to call the 30 second rule. Uh, some people call it environmental design, but it's basically making sure you don't forget about the habits you want to implement. And you can do that by making for good habits, making it 30 seconds easier to accomplish and for bad habits, making it 30 seconds harder. So like if you don't want to watch TV, take the batteries out of your remote and place them on opposite ends of the room. Then if you're going to sit down and watch TV and the remote's not working, you have to make a conscious choice. Oh, I didn't want to do this anymore, but I'm going to do it anyways. And so that 30 second difference might be all you need to stop watching TV and instead focus on something that you actually want to do, like maybe playing guitar or going to the gym. What I've done is every morning when I make my bed, I set out my gym clothes on the bed every day. And I found that I'm more likely to go to the gym now than I have ever before, just because the 30 second difference of me taking it out of the drawer and placing it on my bed. Every time I walk into my room, I see it on my bed and I'm like, oh yeah, I should go to the gym. And that's been really helpful uh, for me. And that's the first law he talks about, which is making it obvious. Yeah, so adding on to that about making habits as obvious as humanly possible, setting things out is going to be your best friend. So I've struggled making it a habit, glossing every single night before I go to bed. And so in order to make that glossing habit a lot more obvious for myself, I set out the floss sticks on my counter. And so while I'm brushing my teeth every night, I'm looking at those floss sticks and it's extremely obvious what I have to do after I brush my teeth. And so rearranging your house in any way you can to make good habits as obvious as, we, as, human po as humanly possible and the habits that you want to take out of your life, like what BJ was saying about the remote, right? And hiding the remote, making it out of sight, right? In times of the day where you don't want to be watching TV, that's going to be your best friend, right? And, and the book talks about an extreme example of putting the TV in your closet and yes. then taking it out. But which, go for it. Like, whatever it takes for you to accomplish your dreams, do that. Yeah, really, whatever it takes. And like, while you're studying, if you have your phone out on your desk, it's extremely obvious where your phone is compared to where your computer is, right? And if you get bored at some point in time during your homework assignment, which is bound to happen, right, you're going to be a lot more likely to reach out in front of you grab your phone and scroll through Instagram or something like that. So taking your phone and turning it off, putting it in another room, right? And taking it way out of sight is going to make it to where it's not extremely obvious that you have your phone on hand. And so it's gonna make it a lot harder for you to do this bad habit, which is scrolling through social media while you're trying to be productive. Right, and then the next law it talks about is uh, making it attractive, which has to do with um, figuring out uh, how to get what you want to do, line up with what you want. And one way you can do that is pairing what you want to do with what you want by having, uh, the book mentions someone hooking up uh, their elliptical machine to their TV. So if they wanted to watch Netflix, they had to be on the elliptical. And that sort of combination of, oh, I want to watch TV, so I'm going to pair working out, out with that. And together, those two things will make it easier. Another way you might try to do it, if you're trying to write a book, then you might put a, a picture of an author that inspires you on your writing desk or whatever. And then looking at that uh, author me, help you remember why you wanted to accomplish this goal. But you need to find some way to make it where, and the other way you can do that is just changing your mindset. You don't, uh, you, you don't have to write, you get to write. That's something humans only figured out how to do in the last 6,000 years of their 200,000 years on earth or whatever. 
and being able to write at scale, printing press was what, 1400s? So that's the last 600 years? And being able to write and send it instantly worldwide, that's the last 40 years. Yeah, with the internet now. It's... You get to write. You, you have an opportunity that no one else for the, the history of most of humankind has had. And doing something like that and figuring out how grateful you are for being able to do this and being able to accomplish your habits and trying to uh, accomplish your goals rather than sort of complaining about something that actually is you're not losing anything. You're gaining a massive amount by having this habit, right? Yeah, and when you're making your habits attractive, you could be really creative here. What you could also do as well is make these random rewards for yourself after you do set habit. So I'm trying to learn how to code right now. And what I could do is I could open up a new bank account and I could title the bank account uh, meal or something like that. And every time I sit down and code for an hour, I can transfer two, three dollars into this new meal bank account. And once this bank account crosses a certain threshold, I can go out and treat myself to a nice meal or something like that. And so any way you can make these habits as attractive as possible, you need to be doing it. You can think of random examples as well. You could also use this same example in the, the opposite way of making your habits less attractive. And so James Clear talks about in the book how when you're trying to make things unattractive, what you could do is you could make a contract with a friend or something like that. And you could write down in the contract, if I don't say, if I don't code for an hour today, then I owe said friend $5, okay? And now not only is coding become attractive, but if I don't do it, it's also become a lot more unattractive, right? And sitting down on the couch and watching Netflix suddenly becomes a little bit less attractive because if I do that, then I owe my friend five bucks now. And so if we frame these habits in a way where it almost becomes easier to do them than not to do them or more attractive to do them than not to do them, we'll be a lot more successful in the end. Yeah. And then after that, it, the third law is making it easy, which is sort of paired with making it obvious. When you set the gym clothes on the bed, it makes it easier to go to the gym. But also you can do that with just the goals you set for yourself as part of that habit. If you're writing a book, you shouldn't say, let's write 10 pages a day. No, write one paragraph a day. Make it so easy. That way, now uh, you'll probably do more. Like, that's not hard to imagine. But setting very low requirements means that you get to maintain your consistency, which above everything else, consistency is what matters when accomplishing your dreams because it's all about that long-term growth. And the only way you're going to have long-term growth is if you're consistent and make sure you don't miss days. And if you do miss a day, don't miss two days. Missing two days is bad. Missing two days is the start of a new habit. And then, so, and you may think, oh, one paragraph isn't enough for the size of book I want to write. But that's the, exactly the type of thinking that you need to abolish from your mind. Because it's not about quantity or quality or anything else. It's about consistency. The w one way I think about it is qu quality and quantity. The coefficients on the equation that results in success. Consistency is an exponent. And if you know math, then you know those exponents make much, much more of a difference than the little no numbers up in front. And so just make it as easy as possible for you to maintain that consistency and you'll start seeing returns. Just show up. Yeah, and another thing I wanna talk about here is gonna be the two minute rule. As BJ was saying, when you're looking to tackle big things, like writing a book or something like that, he said, you know, writing a paragraph is what you need to do. So 
when we have some really large, almost utopian goal that we want to accomplish that seems really difficult to achieve when we're just sitting here thinking about this big goal, we need to narrow it down and say, hey, instead of focusing on running sub 18 minutes in the 5K, which is a really steep goal for a lot of people, maybe we should sit here and focus on showing up and just putting your shoes on and going for a run for a few minutes. You need to be making these habits as easy as humanly possible in the, in the beginning. And once it becomes a habit, and once you start with this small little habit, that's a lot easier to accomplish than just running sub 18 in the 5K, right? It'll build. And a really cool part that James Clear brings up in the book that really resonated with me was how one small decision in the very beginning of your day could change the entire outcome of the rest of your day. He brings up an example of how this girl made a habit out of working out and all she held herself accountable for each morning was hailing the cab. She would get ready, get her clothes on, get her shoes on, which was fairly easy, walk downstairs, hail the cab, and after the cab was hailed, everything else fell in place. Once she held the cab, there's no turning back. She held the cab, she it she held the cab and told the person to go away. You know, that was just a waste of their time at that point. But after she did that one small step, the rest of her day fell into place. She worked out, she got home, she showered, and then you know the rest of the day was a lot more productive than it would have been otherwise if she had, right? Right. And then the last part, the last law is to make it satisfying, which again pairs with making it attractive. In the same way uh, Gavin talked about putting money in a fun account, the other things is you could have food is a great motivator, except when you are one of you happens is a diet or working out, then it that's probably not so great of an option. But yeah, your favorite TV show, a nice shower, fist air fist pumps, uh, a silly dance, anything really can uh, help you get towards. But your brain needs something, something to tell it that, oh, I should do this again. This was useful to me. Because that's the sort of evolutionary psychology sort of basis of this, is that uh, I, I think it's a quote from the book that what gets rewarded gets repeated. And that's what we need to be doing. We need to be rewarding ourselves for the activities that we want to repeat and then sort of punishing ourselves for the activities we don't want to repeat. Like Gavin talked about transferring um, money to a, a friend if they, uh, if they didn't accomplish a goal, that's a great way. If that's still not enough, you might transfer money to an enemy or an organization you don't like. Yeah, that's a great idea. Because then you're like, oh, I don't want to fund deforestation. I'm going to write my book. So you need to just figure out some way, some small reward you can get every day consistently to uh, make it where it is satisfying to accomplish your goals. Uh, there's another sort of method where you have a jar on your desk and every time you accomplish your habit, you just put a jar and you watch it build up. And uh, Gavin and I both use a tracking system where we uh, just every day that we accomplish our goal, we have a little specific calendar just for these goals and we just are tracking it every day and we don't want to break our chain of habits and we just want to see just straight line of all X's down the row of consistently working towards accomplishing our dreams. Yeah, so we have habit trackers and it's literally just like a chart and on the left side of the chart we have each habit written down and each day we accomplish said habit we just check it off and it's extremely satisfying 
when you check another habit off each day and you see that chain just get longer and longer as you accomplish the habit each and every day. And then if you start getting doubts and like almost like intrusive thoughts that are telling you to stop, right? Or invitations to be lazy for that day, you start to think about, oh man, am I gonna break this chain? And how unsatisfying that may be. And then one more thing I wanted to add on to as well about making things more satisfying with food. One of my teachers always said this in high school for one of our one of our homework assignments. We had to read a paragraph for the reading that we were assigned every class, and we would have to write notes about each paragraph. And we had to do this every single class, and it was the worst homework assignment ever because no one liked reading about history for hours upon hours, right? And so our teacher said that you need to frame it to where getting to the end of a paragraph suddenly becomes a little bit more satisfying. He said maybe what you could do is you could set out a bowl of M&Ms in front of you. And after you finish each paragraph and write a few words about each one, then you eat one M&M, right? And so reading each paragraph suddenly becomes a little bit more satisfying but this does become a lot harder if you have habits of becoming healthier, especially with, with eating. But I do really like that example that he gave me like a while ago, and I still remember it. Yeah, and I think we'll be able to link a spreadsheet to that's similar to how we track our habits in the description. So feel free to check that out. But we should also mention there are some drawbacks to tracking habits, like. Tracking a, tracking a habit, the act of tracking is another habit you're implementing in addition to the habit you're already implementing, and that can be a little difficult. Yeah. So whenever possible, you should try to find ways to automate the habit tracking process. Um, I record how I spend my time all day, and rather than working on that throughout the day too much, what I actually do is just at the end of the day, I go through my search history, and I look, oh, this is what I was doing at that time, because a lot of the stuff I'm doing is online. And so I can just use the search history to keep track of my time and get an approximation of what I'm doing. That way I know how productive I'm being. But uh, we also did mention that our uh, habit tracking method does include multiple habits. And that has to do with a method talked about in the book, which is habit stacking, which is where you combine multiple habits you want to do and sort of chain them together one after another. Where uh, for me, when I uh, wake up in the morning and brush my teeth, then immediately after that, I'm going to go do 50 push, uh, uh, 25 sit-ups. And then immediately after that, I'm gonna set my, I'm gonna make my bed and set my gym clothes out on my bed. And then immediately after that, I'm gonna do something else. And so, when we say we're tracking multiple habits, it's really just a couple routines that we group together of multiple habits that we want to get done. And then to, because we're doing multiple habits together, we're able to, it sort of feels like just implementing one habit. All of it becomes automatic. And there's a nice quote from the book that I thought was interesting, where it says something like, civilization advances when the number of things we have to think about decreases. And so a lot of the things we're doing, it's just automatic. Like we don't have to think about uh, how to make food. We just walk into the store and grab it. And because of that, civilization is better and faster or whatever. And so that's sort of what we're really trying to do is just automate. We're, we're trying to put smart on autopilot, which is a Dave Ramsey quote, but that it, we need to just not have stupid on aut autopilot you can't expect good results from just having stupid on autopilot. So we want to put the smart on autopilot through these habits and stacking them together. Yeah, I think that in essence is what this entire book is about, right? That's what a habit is. Because motivation doesn't work long-term, we need to automate 
all these desired habits that we want. We need, we really just need, we need to automate as much as we can throughout our day because motivation isn't going to get us to where we want long term. I believe the ball Robbie Kant said, I don't know exactly how he phrased it, but he did say that motivation is perishable. And because motivation is perishable, we need to make sure that we're not relying on motivation to get us to our desired outcome. The best way to get to our desired outcome is to automate as many things as we can. And all of the things that we've talked about so far in this book are going to help you automate these desired behaviors to eventually become the person that you want to become in the end. Yeah. And one way I can recommend of sort of stacking your habits and getting stuff done is we're going to be doing this podcast every week. Episodes are going to be airing Tuesday at 12 p.m. And so you can have it set up where you're going to listen to this podcast. Shameless plug. And then go on and work on whatever habit you have. And so that sort of combination, or this podcast or any other, anything that you're already doing weekly, go ahead and make a list of everything you're doing, all your current habits, and then figure out ways you can attach on other habits that you would like to add. And so, you know, after listening to the podcast, you might choose to go work out or go write your book or do anything else. But finding things you can link together and then stack them and form chains of habits, that's one of the easiest ways to start implementing, is just building off the habits you already have. The other thing that I think this podcast can sort of offer and what we're going to be trying to do is just building a great community where people who are there accomplishing their goals can interact. And we would love our comment section to be filled with just a ton of love and support between everyone working together to accomplish their goals. And joining those sorts of communities with shared goals is a great way to get yourself to accomplish your goals where doing these habits are just standardized regular behaviors. It's not weird, it's not strange, it's just what everyone does automatically. And um, that can be anything from joining a writer's group or book club if you're writing a book, if you're trying to eat better, then maybe you find some friends who are also trying to eat better and all of you do this together and you know, keep each other motivated and strong by just being around one another and recognizing, oh, this is just what we do. So sort of, and by joining that group and having that group, it sort of becomes part of your ego that, oh, I'm writing this book, I'm a writer, I'm proud of my work, and so I'm going to keep on doing it. And having that sort of ego and pride and changing your identity in that way to it being part of your habit is a great way to get to work on accomplishing your goals. Yeah, and just finding ways to insert yourself into these communities where the normal behavior within this community is your desired behavior, that's going to be very, very crucial. So let's say my desired behavior is to run every day and become a good runner in the end, right? And that can be my outcome goal. Become a good runner and run sub 18 in the 5K. I could look online and try to find running groups or I could get into running with one of my friends. And so you have that accountability where other people are doing it with you. And when other people are doing something with you, it suddenly becomes a lot easier. And this concept can be applied to trying to get bad habits out of your life as well. That's why AA meetings are so successful because you're going through it with other people. And you have just accountability in that way of going through something with other people. And that's essentially what we're trying to do with this podcast right here, as BJ was saying, to form that community to where we can all count on each other to get these books read and learn something from these books. Because a lot of times, I've experienced this myself, 
I'll read some sort of random self-help book by some entrepreneur or some psychologist that aims at benefiting your life in some way. And as I'm reading the book, I'll think to myself, those are some pretty good ideas and then never implement them. And so that's what our goal is to do with this podcast, essentially, to read these books as a community and actually implement their teachings into our lives to make it better. And yeah. So that's, that's really the plan here to form that community. And there's one other great thing from the book that I sort of just want to insert here before we get to our last sort of main point is uh, in chapter 10 of the book where it talks about uh, making it attractive, it also references another book called Alan Coe's Easy Way to Stop Smoking, where it talks about it some of the stuff it mentions is how they went through and changed their mindset where they were like, you don't actually want to smoke. This doesn't actually help you. This, you don't want this anymore. And they just mentally made it unattractive. And you should recognize with these goals, it's two minutes of pain every day of maybe something you don't particularly like doing, but the long-term results, like you, you are gaining so much that you are losing nothing. I would not consider these habits a sacrifice. No, it's just a no-brainer. Getting stuff done and doing great things, becoming successful for basically nothing. Like, who wouldn't want this? Which is why this book is so far-reaching and popular as it is. I think last I checked, it was some 2 million copies sold worldwide. It's just because this is so applicable to anything. Everyone wants to become successful in some way. And by recognizing that these small changes really do result in remarkable things, you're going to realize that and actually realize that you actually should do this and actually will do this. And you will actually see results. And then sort of one other thing is that um, it talks about also how the, the history of the world is just people doing what's easiest at that time. And so reducing friction is so, so effective in that way with making it just a little easier. And by overcoming this mental barrier of I'm doing some super difficult big thing, you're not. You're doing one little tiny thing just every day. And just do it every day. Yeah, framing things to make them as easy as humanly possible and um, taking away as much friction as humanly possible is going to be extremely crucial in the end. And I think uh, BJ hit the nail on the head when we're talking about that. I think the last thing we want to talk about here is regarding entrepreneurship and because BJ and I are want to be entrepreneurs, we, we, we think about a lot of ideas here and there, and we try to relate these books as much as possible to entrepreneurship. And one thing that I really liked that James Clear brings up in Atomic Habits is making your product or service a habit. And the example that he uses within the book is with ABC and ABC releases like, or at the time they were releasing, I believe like three shows every Thursday night. And they knew that a lot of people that were in their target market were sitting at home on a Thursday night, enjoying a glass of wine and maybe some food on their couch, watching TV and they knew their target audience was already doing that. And so what they did was they released them three shows every Thursday night, and they essentially made it a habit for these people to watch their show every Thursday, enjoying their glass of wine with dinner on the couch. And that's how they got so many viewers, or that's a big reason why they were able to uh, garner so many viewers because they essentially made their service a habit. 
or even just retaining the viewers they did get. Once it's a habit, it's just automatic to do it over and over again. And when that habit is something that's benefiting you, that's just going to be massively important. Like you think about how massive YouTube is, it's just a habit to go on YouTube and watch videos for a lot of people. It's just an automatic behavior. Oh, when I need to learn how to do something, I just go to YouTube straight away. And getting, applying these four laws to your business is massively important because when you apply these four laws, you can get just way better results. And so how can you make it easier for people to use your product or service? Do you just need to have a better, more intuitive user interface? Do you need to have a big button right in the middle? Reduce the number of steps needed for sign up. Like whatever it takes to just make it a little easier to use your product could go a long way. Making it more attractive. Maybe that's through content marketing. Maybe that's through just better organization of your landing page, but making people want to use it is so important. And then making it uh, obvious that what I thought would be really interesting is if a like lawyer that handles car accidents and wrecks put out a product where it's like those mats that go in your car or those um, scent thingy hanging off your rear view mirror. You do those and it has the name of the law firm on them. And it's just so obvious. Oh, I'm in a wreck? Oh, right here, this is a law firm. Let me call them up. Like, do something like that where it's just there and it's obvious. Or maybe if your product is geared towards students, maybe you figure out how to get a um, advertisement on the side of a vending machine inside a library or a school lobby. Then when people go and they're studying and they're wishing there was an easier way to study, they look and they see, oh, there's this great tool for studying. And then they have a bite of their chocolate bar and they're satisfied by the chocolate bar. And then they look at your brand and they're satisfied. Something like that. And then the fourth law, making it um, satisfying to use your service. Maybe when they sign up, you have just confetti shoot off in the... Um, Website, something like that, something small, just little reward to make them uh, appreciate what you did. Maybe you have a video thanking them for their purchase, something personal, something valuable to them that maybe just applying those four laws, which unfortunately I did them out of order. First one, make it obvious, then make it attractive, make it easy, and then making it satisfying. Those four things combined could make your business a lot more money by applying them. And I, I think a lot of people talk about doing this sort of thing, but I don't think they call them the same laws as people do when setting habits, but that is what it is. Make it a habit for people to use your product or service for consuming your content, whatever it's going to be. That's exactly what we're doing here by being consistent about posting and uh, making content. And that's exactly what you should do with your business. Yeah, making your product or service a habit as much as possible is going to be uh, crucial in the end. And just sort of wrapping things up here, we're going to be doing this every week. We're going to be posting it at noon every Tuesday. And the book that we're going to be reading next week, if you guys want to read it beforehand, so you guys can sort of formulate your ideas and sort of almost like think them through as we're speaking out about the book as well. We're going to be reading Deep Work by Cal Newport, and we're going to be talking about that one next week. So if you want to read that one before we eventually talk about that book, that would be greatly appreciated. As well, if you guys have any recommendations for books you have already read or maybe want to hear us talk about in the future, feel free to comment them down below or books that you want to read maybe hold yourself accountable by having us read it as well and, and sort of talking about it, feel free to comment that as well. And we just yeah. want to do our best to build that community and uh, be there for you guys with our insights. Yeah, I'm really excited for Deep Book. That's been on my reading list for a very long time. And uh, one other thing is we are aware we have a static image as a background throughout the entire podcast. 
we're not really sure what you guys would like to see and we'd love to hear about what you guys would prefer to have there whether it's maybe notes maybe it's just videos about us talking whatever it is uh we can we're happy to accommodate with whatever we're just not sure what would be best and if you're already here and you've listened to all 40 minutes of this podcast you might as well subscribe since you've clearly at least i I hope enjoyed or learned something from us talking about this and we can't wait to see you got or not see but we can't wait for next week for us to talk about deep work by cal newport hope you guys have a chance to read that and we'll leave you to go work on one of your habits and accomplishing your goals thank you so much